So in the first lecture today, I'm going to be talking about the cell cycle and specifically focusing on what happens during M phase. So to review where we've been in the in lecture, we've been talking about the cell cycle. And just to remind you, mitotic and meiotic cell divisions are responsible for one of the five fundamental attributes of life, and that's reproduction. And in the last lecture, we talked about the four phases and specifically honed in on this S phase during which DNA replication takes place. Today, we're going to be focusing on cell division, so the actual process of cell division, and we're going to look at this phase called mitosis. And mitosis is how the somatic cells in our body divide. And by somatic cells, I mean non-reproductive cells. So we're going to look at these phases of mitosis and then how the cytoplasm separates via cytokinesis. So I want to begin by reviewing some of the evidence from the cell cycle just to refresh your memory. So scientists observed cells undergoing division. And so they, what they observed was that the DNA formed these complex or compact structures that would then be separated into daughter cells. And so here's a very old illustration showing that process where the chromatin condensed and then the chromatin was drawn apart into these daughter cells. And so we knew that there was this phase of cells called the mitosis phase or the M phase and that the cells divided in this process called cytokinesis. And originally scientists labeled the rest of the phases G1, S, and G2 as interphase. So these are all the stages that are called interphase. And during interphase, this is the non-dividing phase of the cells, the chromosomes are uncoiled. And we'll talk a little bit more about what I mean by chromosomes and uncoiling in just a second. The cells are either actually, they're not idle. They are either growing or preparing to divide. And some cells are, are just fulfilling their specialized cell function. So they may not divide again. Um, so those are some of the things that cells might be doing during interphase. And so as I mentioned, interphase includes the S phase. During the S phase, the DNA is becoming replicated. And so let's take a look at this data here. So in this experiment, the DNA in the cell has been labeled with a fluorescent dye. And then the number of cells with a particular ratio of DNA has been quantified. And so you can see that some of the cells have one copy of DNA. And so these would be cells that had finished M phase or were in G1. And then you have cells that begin to duplicate their DNA. So you have some cells that are just beginning to start replication and those that have completed it. So this could be cells early in replication and then here they've completed the replication and are in G2. So that's what's happening in S phase is we have DNA synthesis. In the first gap phase, and we're going to talk more about this phase in the next video, what cells are doing is that they're growing and they're deciding if they're going to begin replication. And so there's a lot of cues that are important for a cell to interrogate to decide if it's ready to replicate. And then in the second gap phase, once the DNA has been replicated, the cell is checking to make sure that that DNA is undamaged and the cell is preparing for M phase. We're going to talk more about these gaps in the next video. So I want to define some of the terms that we're going to be using to describe the DNA through the process of mitosis. So in G1, we have an unreplicated chromosome and this unreplicated chromosome is shown here as this blue squiggly line. And in chromosomes, we have genes. And genes refers to a section of DNA that encodes for a specific RNA and that RNA encodes for a protein. So genes are protein encoding sequences of DNA. And this DNA is wrapped around proteins and these proteins are called histones. And when we refer to pro DNA wrapped around proteins, we call that chromatin, okay? So here's a single chromosome. It's actually, even though it's shown as one little line here, it's in fact a double helix. And if it's wrapped around proteins, we call that chromatin. And then the sequences that encode for a protein, we call a gene. So I'm gonna show these cartoon models, um, especially during lecture, um, to model what's happening with the DNA during 
um, during mitosis. So I want to kind of introduce you to those models here. So I am showing this um, chromosome as a single straight line. But in fact, this is a double helix and it would be wrapped around proteins. And then I'm using this little star here to represent a gene. In S phase, as we talked about, that double helix is copied. Okay, so we have um, gene one and a copy of gene one. And this is, if you zoom in here, this is a double helix. Each strand is a different, or each one is a, a double helix. This is a single replicated chromosome, okay? So I'll try not to refer to this plurally, but this is just one, still one chromosome. We just have twice the amount of DNA. And what I didn't talk about during the last lecture is that this replicated chromosome is held together by these proteins called cohesins. And these are ring-like proteins that wrap around the replicated chromosome and they hold these two different um, replicated chromosomes together. During the process of mitosis, some things happen to the DNA. So the first thing is that the DNA becomes highly condensed around its associated proteins. And this causes this whole long linear chromosome, which is very relaxed here, to be condensed. And it's actually gonna shrink about 10,000 times its original length. And we can view this under a microscope. The second thing that happens is that the cohesions that were holding this chromosome together break down until a single cohesion is left at the center point of this chromosome. And the center point of the chromosome we refer to as the centromere. Okay, so the chromosome has condensed and it's held together by a single cohesion at the centromere. And so this is kind of shown more realistically in this diagram here. So we refer to each arm here, that's a single um, double helix, we refer to it as a chromatid. And the, in a single chromosome, these chromatids are identical, so we call them sister chromatids. And at this stage, a, a chromosome is a pair of identical sister chromatids. Okay, so again, we have a sister chromatid that is joined at the centromere region. So this is, this is important when we start to talk about what happens to the DNA during mitosis. And to mention again, this is still a single chromosome. So in mitosis, we're gonna produce daughter cells that are genetically identical to the parent and identically are genetically identi identical to each other. So here's a parental cell in G1. And then in S, we've now duplicated the chromosomes. And so we have a pair of sister chromatids, right? And these are now joined in this linear form by a bunch of cohesins. In mitosis, what happens is that these chromosomes condense and so now we can visually see the pair of sister chromatids. So here's one chromatid and here's another one. And in this um, diagram here, I'm showing a cell with four chromosomes. And so when we, when you, in class, we're gonna practice um, dividing a cell by mitosis and we're gonna just imagine that the cell we're working with has four chromosomes. And then during the process of mitosis, we're gonna divide each sister chromatid into a daughter cell. And so that daughter cell is going to have genetically identical DNA to that original parent cell in G1. Okay, so, but the number of chromosomes will never change. So we have four chromosomes, four, four, and four. We're going to talk after the exam about the process of meiosis. And this is the process that produces reproductive cells that we call gametes. Our other non-reproductive cells we call somatic cells. And the daughter cells in meiosis are genetically different from each other and contain half the hereditary material. So they contain two of, of those chromosomes, um, which we will talk about more, but just to introduce that concept now.
Okay, so now that we've talked about the big picture, we're gonna hone in on how DNA is separated in the process of mitosis. And it's a continuous process with five subphases. Those are prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And we're gonna talk about what happens in each of these phases, but I want you to, it can be really helpful to diagram these processes out for yourself and keep track of what's happening to your chromosomes in each phase and what's happening to the spindle apparatus. And we'll talk about what that, what that complex is, okay? So those are two things to follow in each of these phases. Okay, so imagine that the cell has just exited the gap phase number two, okay? And they've entered into the first phase of mitosis, which is prophase, okay? The two events that are worth noting in prophase is that the chromosomes condense, okay? So they, they begin compacting even more around their proteins, and this will help them to shrink by 10,000 times their original size. So we still have the same amount of DNA, they're just being tightened up and compacted. The second important thing that happens during prophase is that the spindle apparatus begins to form. Okay, so let's talk about what is in the spindle apparatus. So first, I wanna talk about what the spindle apparatus does. So the spindle apparatus organizes the roads to move the replicated chromosomes. Okay, so this is gonna be our roads to start to separate the DNA into daughter cells. Early on, the spindle apparatus is gonna move the replicated chromosomes to the center of the cell. And then later on, it's gonna separate the hereditary material into daughter cells. Okay, so what is it made of? So the spindle apparatus is composed of microtubules, okay? Some of those microtubules, as well as accessory proteins, form what, what we have in, in animal cells called a microtubule organizing center. And this is the location at which new microtubule polymerization will occur. So microtubules are gonna grow from these microtubule organizing centers. And in animal cells, our microtubule organizing centers are composed of a centrosome. Okay, so this here, this structure right here, is what we call a centrosome. And a centrosome is made up of a pair of two centrioles. So each one of these um, centrioles, shown here, what that is are microtubules that are organized in a cylindrical pattern. Okay, so here in our cell, okay, we have this um, centriole here, and a centriole here, and that makes a centrosome. And we have a pair of these, okay? And so the way the spindle apparatus forms is that these, these um, centrosomes are gonna become, start to become separated. And so they're gonna have these microtubules originating from them. And we call these microtubules polar microtubules. And so they're gonna overlap with each other and they're gonna begin to force apart these two different centrosomes and they're going to force them apart until they form what we call spindle poles and so they're going to be at opposite sides of the cell also eventually but we're going to have these astral microtubules and kinetochore microtubules okay so we'll talk about what these are when they come up but right now we just have our spindle um our, our polar microtubules okay so just to recap we have the we have the chromosomes condensing and we have the beginning of our spindle apparatus. In the next phase, this is prometaphase, and what happens is that the nuclear envelope, right, that is composed of a of a membrane and um, the nuclear pore complexes, it begins to break down. And at this point, right, we have our two spindle poles here. We have microtubules that are originating from this spindle pole, and they're attaching to this region of the chromosomes that's called the kinetochore. And when the microtubules attach here, they're going to be, the chromosomes are gonna be pushed and pulled until they reach the middle of the spindle, 
Okay, and so the middle of the spindle is referring to the middle of the cell. So let me talk real quick about this structure called the kin uh, kinetochore. This is a complex of proteins that are attached to the centromeric region of your chromosome. So let's bring this back. Here we have our chromosome, and our, or our also called the pair of sister chromatids, and they're held together at this central region by a cohesin. And the central region we call the centromere. And at the centromere, this complex of proteins is attached. And this complex of proteins is called the kinetochore. And so let's zoom in on what the kinetochore is. We have a few different proteins. We have some proteins that form these plates and that physically attaches to the centromeric region of DNA. We also have some fibers that hold on to this ring-like structure. And in this ring-like structure, we have microtubules that can kind of slide through this ring and then are tethered to the centromeric region of DNA. And we call these microtubules that attach to the kinetochore, we call them kinetochore microtubules, okay? So now we have polar microtubules and, that are overlapping with each other kind of in the perimeter and over here. And now we have these kinetochore microtubules that are making contact um, through the kinetochore to the chromosomes. Okay, so the next phase we'll talk about is metaphase. So in metaphase, the formation of this spindle is complete. And that's because some um, microtubules are going to attach to the plasma membrane and these are called astral microtubules, and they hold this spindle pole in place at both sides. And this pushing and pulling of chromosomes is going to help align those chromosomes at the metaphase plate. So metaphase is always really easy to identify because the chromosomes are all lined up right here on the center of the cell. And each sister chromatid is held by a kinetochore microtubule at each pole. So here, this sister chromatid is held by a microtubule at this pole, and then at the opposite pole, this sister chromatid is attached with to that pole by a, by a kinetochore microtubule. Okay, so that's metaphase. Once they're aligned at the metaphase plate, what happens, and all the chromosomes have to be aligned, is that the cohesins holding together those sister chromatids are going to break apart. And this is going to release those sister chromatids so that they can be pulled by spindle fibers or by another word for that is by the microtubules to the opposite poles, creating two identical sets of chromosomes. And at the same time, so now we're pulling these apart to the opposite sides. At the same time, those astral microtubules are pulling on the plasma membrane to hold that spindle pole apart. And so what you end up seeing is this lengthening of the cell. So if you had to identify a cell in anaphase, at least an animal cell in anaphase, you would see this lengthening of the cell while these chromosomes were being pulled apart. Okay, so how though exactly are these chromosomes being moved, right? So what exactly is happening at these microtubules that's causing this physical separation? So scientists came up with this really cool experiment to try to figure out the different ways in which these microtubules could be pulled apart. And so what they did was they started to, so they first asked a question. So how do kinetochore microtubules pull chromatids apart during anaphase? And their hypothesis was that microtubules shorten at the spindle pole, okay? So they're gonna say that they, they shorten right here at the spindle pole. An alternative hypothesis is that the microtubules shorten at the kinetochore, okay? So we're gonna talk about what they did to test this. And what they did was that they, they labeled with a fluorescent tag the microtubules as well as the DNA, and they were different colors. And then they marked an area of the microtubules um, and, and so that those microtubules were marked 
And they did this with a laser. So they shined a laser on this spot of the microtubules until it bleached the, the tag. And so that was basically laser bleaching. Okay. Now, if, as their hypothesis says, the microtubules shorten at the spindle pole, this can be thought of as pulling of a rope. Okay. So here's a person pulling on a rope and there's our chromosome. And they have this marked area. And if we were shortening at the spindle pole at this region here, so this is the spindle pole, we were, we're going to expect this mark to move as that pole moves. Okay, so that's one expectation. And that would support the hypothesis, the original hypothesis, that the microtubules shorten at the spindle pole. Another way of thinking about it is the fraying of the rope. So this, would, this is the model where the microtubules shorten at the kinetochore. So in this model, we have our mark here. And if the, chromo the chromosomes will shorten because of fraying, so that's the fraying end of that rope, but the mark shouldn't move if it's shortening at the region of the kinetochore. Okay, so those are the two possible outcomes for this experiment. So what they found was that when the when the chromosomes begin to be pulled apart to the to the um, different poles, their mark did not move. Okay, their mark did not move. The mark was stationary. So this suggested that the kinetochores, or that the microtubules were actually shortening or fraying at the kinetochores. So this is now the model for how chromosomes are separated during anaphase, which is that these plus end of microtubules here that are held in place by the kinetochore begin fraying. And this is a process called catastrophe. And so they begin really quickly fraying. And so the tubulin subunits are released. And this fray, basically then creates a, a force to move this ring backwards. And so that ring is going to be moved backwards. And this is going to continue fraying until the daughter cells each have a copy of chromosomes, of, of uh, identical chromosomes. So here's the, the last process. So here we have um, the cells being pulled apart in anaphase. Um, the next step is telophase, and in telophase, the nuclear envelope reforms and the chromosome, chromosomes decondense. And this is, telophase is considered the end of mitosis when these two nuclei form. So we have two nuclei. And then cytokinesis actually is considered to occur immediately after mitosis. Okay, and this is in which the cytoplasm is divided, okay? And we're gonna talk about cytokinesis in, anim in plant cells and animal cells because it occurs in slightly a different, a different way. So in plant cells, microtubules um, send vesicles from the Golgi and those vesicles contain membrane. And the vesicles fuse to basically form a new membrane that we call the cell plate. Okay, so this process in plants is dependent on microtubules delivering membrane to this central region called the cell plate. In animal cells, there's this ring of actin that's contracted by myosin. And so when the actin begins contracting or when the myosin begins contracting the actin, we see this formation of a cleavage furrow. And this cleavage furrow pinches inward. So basically contracting kind of like if you were to pull um, the uh, elastic or the string on your sweatshirt, right? That the hole would kind of wrap around your face. And this is gonna tighten until division is complete between those two cells. So to summarize what I've told you in this video, cell division is a fundamental aspect of cells that involves copying the DNA, separating the DNA, and dividing the cytoplasm into two distinct daughter cells. The gap phases help prepare the cells for the next phase. In S phase, the DNA is copied. And in M phase, we separate the DNA and cytokinesis divides the cytoplasm. M phase is separated into five subphases. And after practicing in class, you should be able to both illustrate and identify these stages. Again, paying attention to that spindle apparatus
and the location of the chromosomes. So that's it for this video and on to the next one.